Hello there and welcome back to Coffee Break Blogging where we're going to be talking today about creating an awesome information training product. We have been talking about product creation here in this stage of Coffee Break Blogging and how to create the products that you can ultimately sell to your audience and make money because it ultimately, it beats the crap out of any other way to make money with your blog beats the crap out of banner advertising, beats the crap even out of affiliate marketing, it is always best to sell your own stuff. And by that, we're talking about, you know, creating information products here typically. Now, in the last episode, we did talk about various types of products that you can sell on your blog, but I am a huge fan of generally information or digital products, and that's what we're going to be focusing on. Now, before we get started on those eight tips that we're going to give you about creating awesome information training products, I want to remind you about the blog monetization webinar. If you've not attended this, you can find this at blogmonetizationwebinar.com. And on that webinar, I basically walk you through the entire business model that I'm in the business of helping people build. It's what the Blog Marketing Academy is now oriented around, and, and I'm doing this all the time. And so on this webinar, I'm going to show you the business model, and I'm actually going to bring out my little digital whiteboard, and I'm going to draw you through it. I'm going to basically walk you through every little step and show you exactly how it works. And we're not going to hold anything back. So if you want to know the exact business model that you should be building behind your blog, then head on over to blogmonetizationwebinar.com. Pick a date and time that works best for you. And I look forward to seeing you there. Okay, let's jump into these eight tips for creating awesome information training products. Because the last thing that I want you to do is just say, well, I want an ebook, and you just, you know, bust out a word processor and start typing. It'll be very unstrategic. It'll probably be a big hot mess, and it's just not going to be that useful to people. And so we need to think a little bit more deeply about how we design these products. Now, again, in the last episode, episode 115, we talked about the various product types, live workshop, membership site, ebook, things like that. So if you want that type of uh, information, then definitely go back to episode 115 and listen to that one again. And then let's come up to these eight tips, starting right now with number one. The first tip is that we need to keep in mind this is not about the thud factor. And what do I mean by that? Well, the thud factor is basically a way of saying we want to impress people with the size of our product. And it used to be, and actually and still is in many cases, that that is what product creators try to do is they try to put everything plus the kitchen sink into this product in order to just wow people with the sheer size of it. And we think that because they're like, well, I'm getting so much for my money, I must buy this. And, and so what happens, though, by creating this huge, huge pool of crap that you're trying to, to sell to people, what ends up happening is that you're actually making the product a lot less useful. Because here's the thing, with the internet as it sits today, do we really need more information is lack of information really the problem? No, it isn't. It isn't at all. What really is the problem is a lack of structure, a lack of true understanding behind the information that's out there so that we can use it to get a result. And so for that reason, by just throwing everything into a big bucket, this big pile of more and more information saying, here, pay me and you can have this, that's just not effective. A, it will actually harm your sales. But B, even the people who do uh, buy that thing are not going to be able to get the result that they want, okay? Because it, the product is just so big that they don't know where to start. They don't know how to get things done. And therefore, they're much more likely to request a refund from you. If you've got a recurring membership site, they're a lot more likely to cancel. And it's simply because they're so confused by the sheer amount of stuff. OK, so the big thing here is it is not about the thud factor. It's only about getting them to the end point. We re, I re, ended off the last episode by saying that it isn't about the type of product that you're creating. It's about what it takes to get them to the solution that they want. That's what they want. That's why they buy your product. They buy it so they can get some kind of an outcome. And your product only needs to be as big as it needs to be to get them to that outcome. 
It does not need to be bigger than that, and you're actually going to do a disservice to your customer by trying to make it bigger than what they need just because you're trying to impress them with its size, okay? Tip number two, you want to know the exact outcome that you plan to take them to before you begin creating that product. So as I just said, it really comes down to getting them to an end game, delivering the exact solution that you were promising them when they bought that product. And you need to know what that outcome is in very clear terms, and then you need to design the product in such a way that it gets them there in a clear way. Now, again, realize that's a completely different way of of, uh, thinking about your product than just throwing a bunch of stuff into the pail, okay? That's the everything plus the kitchen sink mentality. It just doesn't work. What we're doing is we're actually taking the concept of the transformation, the transformation that we talked about here on this podcast many times and how your blog should be oriented around delivering that transformation. Well, your product is the delivery mechanism for the transformation. And so the exact structure and layout of your product should be very clear clear to give them that transformation without a bunch of headwinds or confusion, okay? Now, the only way that you can get them there is to really know what that outcome is that you're looking to take them to before you start creating the product. Because your product, the value of your product is not in how many videos or how many pages are in your product. It's in how effective you deliver the outcome. How effectively are you doing that, okay? Now, that leads us right into tip number three, and that is to most definitely outline your product in advance. Don't go and just start writing some ebook. Don't go and start just creating a bunch of training videos or something for a membership site. You want to actually outline everything in advance. You want to make sure that you that uh, your planning and the structure of things is actually worked out as a separate thing than actually creating the videos, okay? By the time you actually get to creating the content itself, you should have the full outline in place, know exactly what you're gonna be talking about, and then it's just a matter of executing for you. It's just like, okay, I got that video done, check. I got that video done, check. But you should have the entire thing laid out already before you ever hit the record button. Now, by doing that, you're going to enforce on yourself as the creator that you're actually creating an exact progression that gets them from point A to point B. You know, you're delivering that outcome. You're delivering that transformation. You want to make sure that your product is designed. And I mean that word very literally, designed to get that done. Okay, completely different than this idea of just throwing everything into the mix and saying, oh, hopefully people just buy it. You know, remember here, people are not buying your information. They're just not. They're buying the outcome and they're buying your offer because you promised that they could get that outcome using what you've got. They don't usually need just more information. They could probably go YouTube it. Okay, tip number four. And this is a biggie. You need to exercise clear control over your students. Now, what do I mean by that? A lot of times people get really uh, just stressed out or like nervous about the idea of being controlled or controlling others. So what exactly do I mean by that? Well, if you're going to get somebody through a transformation and get them to a particular outcome, then you are the authority in that space. They're looking to you to get it done. And the only way that they're going to get there is by you guiding them to that point. And you need to be the confident advisor to get them there. You need to be the person who knows and you need to be very clearly pointing and saying, go that direction. And which means you're telling them what to do, okay? Now, it's very important that you're very clear by telling them what to do. But the other really important thing here is that you need to give them a very clear start point and a very clear end point. Because here's the thing. There's a difference between good control and bad control. Bad control is often very disorderly. Uh, you, you might say, go do this, and then somewhere else you say, and go do something opposite. That's bad control. They might want to do what you say, 
but you're just confusing the crap out of them. And that's not effective. So good control is that they know what the outcome is. They agree with that outcome. And therefore, it's not as if you're you're enforcing anything or telling them what to do. You guys, the two of you, you as a product creator and your customer are actually walking in unison. You're guiding them. You're pointing in that direction, but they're going there with you because they're in agreement with what you're doing. And they also see that there's a very clear start point and a very clear end point, and they see the clear progression between the two. And that's very, very important when you're creating your product, that they see that start point and they see that end point. Now, the end point is usually going to be contained in the promises that your offer gave them. But when they get into your product, you need to make it very clear, this is where we start start. This is where we're going to be going. This is how we're going to do it. Let's get going. Okay. Now that's a big um, control difference over you just created everything, but the, plus the kitchen sink in your offer and you just throw them into the pool and say, have fun with that. Let me know if you have any problems. Okay. And trust me, I've made this mistake. There's still things that I'm doing with the blog monetization lab in order to make this even better for existing lab members because I know, especially in the world that I operate in, which is basically business and online marketing training, I know how confusing this topic can be for people. And so the the more clear that I can be on this is where you start, this is what you do next, this is what you do after that. And I exercise that control along the way, they're going to love the lab. They're going to love me. Not that that's my goal, but that's going to be a side effect. But most importantly than that, they're going to get the result that they came into the blog monetization lab for. Okay? That is the importance of that. So that's a really important tip. You have to exercise clear control, and you need to give them a start point and a clear end point. Okay, next tip, tip number five, we need to make sure that we consider different learning types when we create our product. Now, I'm going to be going into more detail on this in a future episode here, but you've probably heard before that there are people who learn visually, there are people who learn by listening, and there are people who learn best by writing, okay, by written word. Um, and you... If you, in order to deliver the transformation to people via your product, your product needs to accommodate those three types of people. So this is very often why you'll see videos uh, coupled with a written transcript, coupled with an audio download of the same thing. Uh, you're you're kind of hitting all different mediums there. So you want to build that into your product. Okay. Tip number six, don't use any words that your students are likely to not understand, at least at the point that they are at. So f consider if, uh, if a brand new person entered the blog monetization lab and I was using big marketing jargon words that somebody who's been in the business for a few years would understand, but somebody who's just starting out would not. I would be throwing words at them that they're not ready to hear yet. And you can't do that either, because if you are using words that your student does not understand, what's going to happen is that they are probably going to log out, back off, request a refund, and just simply leave. That's the way human beings tend to react to subjects that seem confusing. It's often confusing because there are words being used that we don't understand. We as human beings tend to react to that by simply wanting to walk away from it. OK, now we don't want people to walk away from our products. We want them to actually go through the entire thing so that, you know, maybe they'll become a, a um, you know, a future customer down the road on something else, blah, blah, blah. But also we want to make sure they get to that outcome because that's going to make them a true fan of your business and help them, you know, motivate them to spread the word about you to others and that type of thing. So don't use words that they're just not going to understand. And that goes for jargon, obviously, but it also goes for just regular English words. Okay. Uh, you know, it, it is, I'm not saying you got to dumb it down to a first grade level or anything, but you need to be careful about the words that you're using. Uh, and if you're using a word that you think that uh, some people might not understand, link it out to a, a definition or something like that. Give them a glossary that will help tremendously. Okay. Tip number seven, you want to make sure that you build some kind of a mechanism into your product for two-way communication. 
because it's natural that they are going to need to ask questions and you absolutely need to give them that. Now, if you're delivering a course or something via a membership site, then this is really easy to build in. Um, you could put in a forum, you could link them off to a private Facebook group. There's a lot of things that you can do, but the big thing is, is that you need to make it very clear that they have that channel for assistance. Even if it's a simple contact form where they can email you, use it. You know, I, and I would I would say actually for customers of yours, you should have a, a more direct way of contacting you. So if I mean if your business is such where you're using a support desk and all that kind of stuff, that's great. But you know, one of the things when somebody pays you money is that they they expect and I think they deserve to have a pretty a fairly direct line of access to you. So even if it's a simple ebook that they've purchased from you, you should give them a line, maybe a private email address inside that book so that they can ask you questions, okay? All right, number eight, and this will be our last tip for this episode so we don't get too long, is that I want you to think about how you can gather and celebrate success stories along the way. And I also related to that is the idea of acknowledging their completion of the product. Okay, now what do I mean by that? Well, go, let's go back to tip number four where I talked about exercising clear control. You gotta provide a very clear place to start. You need to provide very clear guidance on the progression and the order of events. And then there's a very clear end point. Now, the thing is about that end point is that there needs to be a point there where they acknowledge the fact that they have accomplished what they set out to accomplish. It's not so much that you, you know, say, oh yeah, you got there, whatever. They need to see that they got there. And the way that you can do that and provide a, a um, you know, like a, like a period on the end of the sentence that we're building here is by actually having them acknowledge their successes they received with the product. And by doing that, you can also acknowledge their completion. So there's a couple things that I would recommend that you do, and I, and I do build this into the lab. It's, it's one of those, first of all, you can ask them for what they got out of what they just went through. You can ask them what results they got with it. And you can also, by, by the way, use this as a great way to get testimonials for that product, okay? Now, Secondly, what you can do is have them do that only when they're completely done with that particular, you know, product or course or whatever the unit is that we're talking about here. And by they're basically attesting to the fact that they completed it. And by by going through and saying, yes, I did complete this. This is what I got out of it. Then for them, it's actually putting a period on the end of that sentence. They say, yes, I got what I wanted out of this product. This is fantastic. It also provides an opportunity for quality control because if they get to the end of that product and they say, well, no, I didn't really get what I wanted, you need to go back and fix it, okay? And you can perfect the product so that that doesn't continually reoccur. Okay, so that is the gather and celebrate people's successes and also acknowledge their completion. Get them to acknowledge their completion. Okay, so those are eight really important tips, things that I've learned along the years when it comes to creating information training products. Hopefully you found that useful to you. This is kind of some big picture stuff, but some stuff that from a strategy standpoint, I think is very important to creating effective training material. And it just goes a lot deeper than just simply, you know, yanking out your word processor and typing or hitting the record button on a video and just blabbing into the camera. Okay. That's, you know, you know, better than nothing, but we really want people to get results. And that's what it's all about. And by the way, I mentioned at the beginning of this episode, the blog monetization lab, if you want to see how I put together my training, well, I would love to see you inside the blog monetization lab. So you can learn more about that at blogmonetizationlab.com. Thanks so much for listening, and I will see you next time where we're going to continue on our journey here talking about creating awesome products that we can sell. See you on episode 117 coming up. Thanks for listening to this episode of Coffee Break Blogging. If you like what you heard here today, we have something awesome we'd love to send you. It's called the Blog Conversion Guide, and it has nine tweaks you can make to your blog in order to increase your conversion rate to get more opt-ins and sales. As one of our listeners, we'd love to give you access to this guide absolutely free. 
You can get your copy right now by going to coffeebreakblogging.com. Again, go to coffeebreakblogging.com to get your copy, and we'll see you next time.